All right, chapter 19, Patterns of Chromosomal Inheritance. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about chromosomes themselves. We're going to talk about those two stages of mitosis and meiosis. So the first thing I want to talk about is the process of cellular division. This is going to be a highly, highly regulated process. Life begins with single cells, but in only a very short amount of time, that single cell can lead to trillions and trillions of cells through the process of cellular replication and division. Now, not only can these single cells produce millions and trillions of cells, but they also give rise to highly specified cells. So even though you start out as a single cell called uh, a single celled organism, there are over 200 different types of specialized and individualized cells in your body, each with their own unique function to perform. This process of cellular replication and division is what we're going to be studying in this chapter. So throughout the course of our lives, we're going to undergo two different types of cellular division, each with their own purposes. In the first type that we're going to go through is mitosis. Mitosis, or I'm sorry, meiosis. Meiosis is used exclusively for nuclear division and sexual reproduction. This is only going to occur for the production of gametes or sex cells, like we talked about in our previous chapter. Once two haploid cells fuse together to become a single fertilized zygote, the cell is going to undergo mitosis. Mitosis is going to be used to grow a single cell into a multicellular organism. So mitosis is going to be used primarily for growth, but also repair. So we're going to see mitosis when a fertilized egg becomes an embryo, an embryo becomes a fetus um, after the birth and when a child becomes an adult, and then any time a cut heals or a broken bone bends or we need to replace damaged and worn out cells. So since this process is all about chromosomal division, we first need to talk about what a chromosome is. Every cell contains DNA. DNA is how we're going to store all of our genetic information. If we're going to grow from a single cell into a complex multicellular organism, we need every cell to be reading from the same set of instructions. So before we can grow and divide as a cell, we need to make sure that we have an exact copy of our DNA to pass on to the next round of cells. So we need to talk about the shape and structure and function of DNA. DNA is going to take on several different forms depending on what the current function for DNA is. When, DNA, when the cell is replicating its DNA, and it's also, oh, I'm sorry, when the cell is replicating its DNA and carrying out its normal daily functions, the DNA is going to remain in long, thin strands, loosely coiled, called euchromatin. This is going to be invisible under the microscope. During cellular division, the chromatin is going to condense down into chromosomes, which will be located inside of the nucleus. Can we pause for just a second? And I want you guys to think about why would we want to condense our DNA during the cellular reproduction? What benefit would this provide? All right, I'm going to leave that as an open-ended question, um, but feel free to get back to me or email me your thoughts. Why do we condense down our DNA for um, cellular replication? All right, so those cro that chromatin is inside the nucleus. The nucleus is going to hold all that genetic material um, that is responsible for directing all the functions in the body. Uh, we're going to condense those that DNA down into chromosomes. Chromosomes are made of DNA. The instructions in each chromosome are going to be contained within genes. Genes are going to be, in turn, of course, composed of that DNA. Uh, DNA also compose, or, or not DNA, but uh, chromosomes also contain proteins. So not only do they have our DNA, but they also contain proteins that insist in the that assist in the organiz organizational structure of the chromosomes. Collectively, the DNA and the proteins together are called chromatin. Now humans have 46 chromosomes. They're going to be broken down into 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 of those pairs are called autosomes. Autosomes are found in both males and females, but there is one pair of chromosomes that is called the sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes contain the genes that control our gender. Males are going to have the sex chromosomes X and Y. Females, on the other hand, have two X chromosomes. Uh, you're going to see this term. We're not going to spend a lot of time on karyotype, but you will see karyotype mentioned quite a bit in your, te in your textbook, so we want to go over what it is. Karyotype is simply a display of the chromosomes that are present in the cell. 
When a cell divides, the chromatin is going to condense down to form those chromosomes. If you were to stain those chromosomes, you're going to see very light and dark banding patterns um, at varying widths. And a computer can use those in addition to size and shape to pair up those chromosomes. So we'll see that all of the chromosomes, uh, or all chromosomes 1, are going to have the same banding pattern. So we're going to see, um, we're going to see certain genes found in this region and matching genes found in this region. We're going to see that all chromosomes uh, 13 are going to have somewhat the same banding pattern. Um, and the reason that we care about this banding pattern, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on when we talk about um, our DNA code, is that certain alleles are going to be found in specific regions. So for example, we're going to see that while, yes, we still we have the exact same banding pattern um, right here and right here, this may be this light pink region. This light pink region is going to potentially code for hair color. We might have, uh, because we have you know two different chromosomes, one inherited from your mom, one inherited from your dad, uh, we might see that you've inherited light hair from your dad and dark hair from mom. Now this region is going to code for hair color either way, but we're going to see two different alleles or two different potential outcomes for that hair color. We might find that finger length is located over here on the 13th chromosome. We're gonna have this small blue banding portion here on your mom's chromosome and a small blue banding portion here on your dad's chromosome. We might see that dad gives you the code for short fingers, mom gives you the code for long fingers. So um, anyway, sorry, that's, that's getting in a little bit deeper than we need to go right now. We will talk extensively about alleles, allylic combinations, locations for genes in our next chapter, but I just wanted to uh, kind of point out how you can use this karyotype to um, to analyze the, the DNA, analyze the karyotype of a human being. All right, so like we said, 23 pairs, of the 23 pairs of the chromosomes, we do have one pair of so-called sex chromosomes. Sex chromosomes make up one pair and they ultimately are going to be responsible for determining gender. Two X chromosomes, so here's the X chromosome here. Two X chromosomes indicate a female, an X and a Y indicate a male. Autosomes are going to make up the remaining 22 chromosomes. So all the rest of these, chromosomes 22 through 1, are going to be our autosomes. Now those are going to be responsible for determining the expression of a person's inherited characteristics. Somatic cells. So somatic cells are going to be all of the cells in your body except for eggs and sperm. In the somatic cell, we're going to see two complete sets of your chromosomes. So uh, let's say in the skin cell of your toes, you're going to have 46 chromosomes present. You're going to have two of each type of chromosome. You're going to have two number one chromosomes, two number two chromosomes, two number three chromosomes. This is going to be found in all the cells of your body. Here you have one set of chromosomes from each parent. So I have one number one chromosome from my mom, one, cro one chromosome from my dad. I have one X chromosome from my mom, one X chromosome from my dad. So you have one of each type from your parents. When we pair them up, we say that these chromosomes are homologous. So chromosomes occur in homolog homologous pairs. A homologous pair of chromosome is when one chromosome of the pair is from the mother, one chromosome from that pair is from the father. In a cell that has homologous pairs of chromosomes, we say that the cell is diploid. This is just a cell where there are two types of each chromosome, whereas a haploid cell is only going to contain one copy of each type of chromosome. So our, home, our somatic cells, are those going to be diploid or haploid? What types of cells, so our somatic cells are going to be diploid. Every single cell in my body, with the exception of sex cells, is going to have uh, two pairs of chromosomes. Every cell in my body is going to be diploid. What about, uh, but sex cells or gamete cells, on the other hand, are considered haploid. They only have one of each set of chromosomes. So they only have one number one chromosome, only one 22 chromosome, only one sex chromosome. Why is that? 
I'm going to leave that out there for you. Why do our sex cells only have one of each type of chromosome? Why are our sex cells considered, or why are our sex cells haploid cells, but our remaining cells are diploid? So just as an overview of mitosis, mitosis is cellular division. This is going to begin when the fertilized egg starts dividing. It ensures that every cell in the body is diploid or has 46 chromosomes. In the dividing cells, each chromosome is going to be composed of two identical parts called sister chromatids. So here we have a single chromosome. That single chromosome has two identical parts called sister chromatids. See that this region over here, we have a pink region and a corresponding pink region. We have a white region and a corresponding white region. We have a dark red region and a dark red region. So these are our sister chromatids. They're going to be exact copies of each other all the way down. In the dividing cells, so like I said, in the dividing cells, each chromosome is going to be composed of two identical parts called sister chromatids. Now, these are said to be replicated or duplicated because the chromas are duplicated chromosomes because the two sister chromatids contain the exact same genes. Now, these two sister chromatids are going to be held together at a single region right here in the center known as the centromere. This is going to hold those two sister chromatids together until the middling phase of mitosis during metaphase, during which the centromere is going to split. Well, metaphase, anaphase. This is when the centromere is going to split. Once separated, each sister chromatid is a single chromosome. And when those daughter chromosomes separate, the new cell is going to get one of each type or a full set of chromosomes. So here's what's going to happen. You have a single chromosome in your cell. This chromosome is going to duplicate and form a sister chromatid. Now this sister chromatid is going to be held together at the centromere. What's going to happen is during the phase of mitosis, the centromere is going to dissolve. These two sister chromatids are going to separate and we're going to have two daughter cells. One cell is going to have this chromatid. The other cell is going to have this chromatid. And now we have two, where we once had one cell with a single chromosome, we now have two cells each with a single chromosome, but those two cells are completely identical. They have identical DNA, they have identical chromosomes. We are gonna flesh all of this out later on in the chapter, so for this part, just be able to explain the purpose of chromosomes in a cell, describe how a karyotype can be used to determine the number of chromosomes in a cell, and um, you should be able to explain why sister chromatids are gen genetically the same. So make sure you go through that, read through a little bit about sister chromatids and what they are, and why are they genetically identical.